Bro, I really had to look up the definition of SEO before making this video because we all know what it is, but we don't really know the definition of it. So I'm just going to read it off this Google thing here. And it basically says that SEO is the process of improving the quality and quantity of website traffic to a website or web page from search engines. I kind of already knew that. I mean, I hope you believe me, but um, yeah, it's basically getting traffic into your site or app generally speaking organically through a few strategies generally speaking when you think of seo you typically look at blog posts um, using keywords that's typically what people say but one of the main ways that you can actually rank and do pretty well with seo is programmatically and adding things to your code so that you can highly rank when people search for your company or the topic of your company and generally speaking i can't lie um that shit doesn't matter like it does not matter when you're starting out, but as you grow as a company and if you were ever worked at a company that's like, you know, making a couple million a year, um, what separates you versus your competitors tends to be the little things like SEO. So what I'm going to show you is the things you do at Cal.com and at my company to rank quite highly with SEO as we do get approximately... I think it's like 800 or 900,000 people. Actually, it's we're at a million, basically. A million visitors to our website uh, every month. So with that being said, let's get into it. So I've broken SEO down into like two or three, let's just say two main components. First being the technical stuff. And secondly being the benefits and adding on top of the technical stuff that we do. It'll make sense in a second. But let's get into the technical stuff first. So when it comes to technically adding SEO into your app, you should basically think of it as adding extra information about your company and topics at your company so that the search engine knows more about it so that it could put it on like the front page of the Google search and know more about it. You can kind of think of it as a piece of paper and this will make sense in a second, but think of it as a piece of paper that you're basically giving to Google for each page of your site saying these are the topics about it. So for example, right, like I work at a scheduling software company. So each SEO page optimized, right? If we want to optimize our SEO, we want to have this figurative piece of paper saying open source scheduling software, Calendly alternative, blog post about X topic on scheduling, stuff like that. And why we do this is that Google can oftentimes be um, off. So that's why people call it SEO optimization. So this just allows us to better rank and maybe give us a better chance of being first because we have the most amount of content. And the best way to do this in literally every big company you can think of that you know tries to optimize SEO technically does this is through meta tags. Now, like I said earlier, these are basically just descriptions of each page that you utilize throughout your app. Um, and typically that is done through reusable components that include images for social media, technical information about your product and dynamically rendering certain information about your company. So for example, a page might look something like this where we have a reusable meta component, for example, and we're importing for Next.js, we're importing the head, like that sounds so wrong. And within here, we have a few attributes that we're using throughout the entire page. Uh, first being the images that we use in Twitter. So basically when you share a page of Cal, you want it to have that image. It's not just going to be empty like that. We definitely don't want to do that. So including an image will uh, consist with like good SEO practices. And on top of that, right, we have this component that includes basic information about Cal. Where the reusability comes in is that when we create a new page, um, within there we import this component and we add the information about the page. So for example, it would be, let's just say we're making a page on instant meetings, right? We import this meta component, call it within our page somewhere and include information about instant meetings. This includes the name, so it'll be instant meetings that will be on the little sidebar. Um, this would be stuff like descriptions. So when you're searching and it pops up as instant meetings, cal.com, and we just reuse that over and over again. We can use this in other reusable components. We can use it within a CMS. So if we want to dynamically render that stuff and there's a whole bunch we can do, but typically this is one of the main ways we do things, which is through meta tags and uh, head tags in XJS, uh, where we're including a lot more information about your company and the topics throughout the app. Another thing we use are sitemaps, which is basically a page in your app, usually at like the root of your app, which tells the search engines like Google what the important pages of your app are. And it's typically written in XML, which stands for uh, extensible markup language. Um, it's a markdown language and bro, 
It's extensible, but it has it starts with an E. Like how how stupid is that? I was just thinking about that. But anyways, that's beside the point. The basic goal here with this language of XML, it's just like a it's like HTML, um, and it basically just allows you to like send data to the computer. It just makes it easier for both sides to like understand it. But essentially, in this page, you're telling the search engine what pages are very important and that you want to be seen. So you tell it exactly what the pages are, what pages you might want it to ignore. You can also get like very specific pages so if it's one you really want. Um, other things could be like URLs, um, translated pages. So if you have like a French page, just so like cal.com slash fr for French, I think that is, uh, cal.com slash German. So you want to tell it exactly like these are available. You can also do that. But you can basically think of it as a way of telling these search engines that, hey, these pages are important. And it's actually what we use and a lot of Next.js uh, users use as well. Uh, basically everyone, I'm just thinking Next.js because we write in it. Another thing that a lot of companies use, but we don't, is a robots.txt file. Uh, these basically just, you know, tell the search engine what pages are permissible to crawl and the ones that are not. So for example, like, let's say you have a admin page that you don't want accessed by the crawler. You can kind of just restrict it in this page, but uh, we don't really use it. But I just want to say it here just because it's, um, it's something that you know, some companies use. So another way to technically rank for SEO is through using the right HTML tags. Now for some of us Next.js developers, we can get really lazy and not really care about using the right HTML tags only because it doesn't matter, right? When you use a span versus a div, doesn't really matter. When you're using a P tag or an H1 for your header, then look doesn't matter, right? It just doesn't matter. However, it does matter and it matters a lot. For example, let's say you have a page where you're talking about the benefits of using your product versus some other competitor, right? You want the title to be read as why our product is better than Calendly, right? And if we don't make it obvious to the search engine, because these search engines, they have to be optimized. No shit. But the we want them to give them the right answers, right? It's not always accurate. So we want to tell it that, hey, this is the title that we want when someone is searching. And if we're using, let's just say a P tag, it will think that is a description and it won't be able to locate the actual title. And so using the right tags, right, where it doesn't really matter next year, but when it's translated into HTML for the SEO to read, um, you want it to read the right things. So that means using H1 tags for your titles, H2 tags for your subheaders, um, lists, uh, P tags for your descriptions, basically making it organized and I try my best to do this. I don't always do this and I really should, but um, yeah, that's very important. And if you want to rank for SEO, this is obviously something you want to do. And so we're basically done with the technically optimized SEO stuff. You know, we just talked about, um, but in this next section, uh, we're going to go over how to utilize these pages and optimize uh, coded pages so that we can rank for SEO. And this basically just comes down to making a ton of pages, blog posts, and a lot of content on your subject. And why we see this, right? Why these companies, why you see a lot of companies write blog posts when you don't really think they need to is because more content and more topics on your company equals the more possibility that people will see it, thus go to your site, thus turn into customers. So like I just said, blog posts are a great, great, great way of doing this. We have a blog post with, I bet it's like a couple hundred posts. It's way more than a hundred. It's like almost a thousand posts, I'm going to guess. And we do that so that when someone searches for a specific subject, right? Like, let's just say again, someone's searching up Calendly alternative open source. Well, we have a blog post on open source alternative to Calendly, right? We have that as a title. And so that when someone searches that, we might hopefully be the first one there or one of the few in that section. Within this section, we also have like YouTube videos and backlinks. So like basically paying someone to make a video on us, like a sponsored video, so that when someone look, goes to YouTube and looks for this stuff that it leads back to our site. Um, also, what I just said was, um, I'm losing my train of thought here, so I'm just talking for no reason. Um, but it could be YouTube videos of our own, right? That's what I was about to say. YouTube videos of our own where we're making content. Basically, just to get the content around so that when someone searches for us, we are there. When you're searching Nizi Abby on YouTube, you're going to find me, right? That's because I made a ton of content and you're able to find stuff. Let's just say you're looking up a video on how... Uh, big companies write code. I made a video on that. Hopefully, I'm the first one there, right? You make content so that people 
see your content, thus turn into customers. And again, within this topic, we're using this, and this actually is more important than the technical and real technical stuff, but pairing these two together, right? Let's say you make a blog post. You wanna have the information and the correct information on your blog post, and using those meta tags, those site maps, and all of those things involved, using the right H1 tags and P tags, um, using those in conjunction, really turns this into a powerful ranking tool. And so yeah, there is a bunch more I can get into, like translations, like that's a really good one. Um, but these are the main ones, and I think if you implement these, you will have a really, really, really good SEO ranking, and at least optimize it so that you rank. Hopefully you learned a lot. These are just things we do at cal.com. And uh, so yeah, hopefully you learned something. And yeah, please like and subscribe. Uh, it really goes a long way. Um, you see, I do these videos for free. So I'd really appreciate a like and subscription. Um, if you did make it to the end of this video, please leave something below. It's a question. Hell, even two kiss emojis. I'll send something back. It would just be highly appreciated just because YouTube doesn't really pay that well. And uh, I love you guys, so I'll respond. Happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.